So we've got marginal product of capital, marginal product of labor, and they tell us how does output change if you change just the labor by itself. It goes up, sure, but does it go up at an increasing rate? That would be increasing uh, marginal product of labor. Or does it go up at a decreasing rate or constant? You can do the same thing with capital. Holding fixed the labor, what happens to the uh, output if you change the capital? But we've got two inputs. And a lot of the times we're going to be interested in changing both things at once, okay? And to capture that, we can't use just these uh, de partial derivatives because they only tell you what happens when you change uh, one pro uh, input at a time, okay? So th they're defined to be how does output change if capital stays the same and you change capital. To capture the idea of what happens when you change multiple inputs? Economists use a term called returns to scale. Okay, so returns to scale is another property of a production function. And like marginal product of labor, they can you can have increasing returns to scale, you can have constant returns to scale, or you can have diminishing or decreasing returns to scale. And what makes them different? is that with returns to scale, we're going to increase all of the factors of production, all of the inputs by the same amount, and we're going to see what happens to the output. Okay, so we're going to start with a function of capital and labor. It's going to be equal to some amount of output. Then we're going to uh, scale up. We're going to increase the amount of capital and labor by the same amount. For concreteness sake, let's say we double it. So instead of k, we're going to have 2k. And instead of l, we're going to have 2l. And the question is, we're going to have some new amount of q, which I'll call q with an asterisk, called q prime. And we want to know, how does q prime compare to q? OK, you might think, well, if you've got twice the capital and twice the labor, then q prime is equal to 2q. Okay. Twice the labor, twice the capital, you're going to have twice the, uh, twice the output. And that's not crazy. That's, that's like, uh, that applies to a lot of situations. Uh, but it's not universally the case. In fact, it's the special case where returns to uh, scale are constant. Okay, So if you have constant returns to scale, uh, output increases uh, by the same proportion as inputs. If you double the inputs, you double the outputs. If you triple the inputs, you triple the outputs. If you half the inputs, you half the outputs. That's constant returns to scale. If, on the other hand, Q star is less than 2Q, that means that you doubled all the inputs, but you didn't double your outputs. You got less than half. And this also can occur in many parts of the real world. I'll give you some examples about why. So in this case, in output increases by less than inputs. That's kind of poorly phrased. The proportion of the output, the proportion that output increases uh, is less than the proportion that you change the inputs, okay? So why might that happen? Well, suppose you've got like uh, a farm, you're growing food, you can, you have a fixed amount of land because, you know, let's suppose our colonists landed on a really big island and there's only so much arable land on it. You can increase the amount of labor, you can double it, triple it, quadruple it, you can do the same thing with the amount of capital and machinery, double, triple, quadruple it, but if you've only got a fixed amount of land, then you can't double, quadruple, and whatever the amount of food you produce, okay? So suppose originally they're harvesting all of the land just really loosely uh, by having a small number of laborers and machines run over and, like, and plant stuff everywhere, okay? If you double the amount of labor and double the amount of capital, well, they can plant it more closely, they can monitor it more closely, and you can get more output than if you didn't supply that, but you don't get twice as much because you are constrained by the amount of land. And that's kind of a general rule of thumb. If you have decreasing marginal returns, there's usually a sort of hidden factor 
not increasing. Okay, and this could be something like uh, managerial talent too, right? Something kind of abstract like that. So if you double the amount of workers, double the amount of everything, but there's only one, you know, Elon Musk, for example, who has the vision to whatever, like oversee the workers or pick your own favorite example, then you may not get twice as much output at the second factory or the second amount, okay? So that's decreasing, okay? And then, I don't know where these guys went, but it was useful. If we have increasing returns to scale, that's the last case where oops, the amount of output is greater than two times Q, okay? Uh, the rule of thumb here is output increases by a greater proportion than inputs. And this can also happen uh, sort of like when you have increasing marginal product of labor if specialization and things happen. In fact, increasing returns to scale are really common in the real world, okay? Um, they occur anytime you have to pay a large, you know, you have to, if you have a large factor of production that makes you really efficient, but you kind of have to be at a certain scale to justify buying it. So for example, suppose you've got, uh, you could invest in like a, a robot that, uh, you know, turns out cars by the millions, okay, but it's really big and expensive and if if you only need a small number of cars uh, there's no such thing as half that robot okay like it can produce out a million cars a day well that's probably an example say it can put out a uh, hundred cars a day it's just this robot but you need the whole package there's no half robot that you give you 50 cars a day or you know a third of a robot that gives you just 30 cars a day okay instead you need the whole thing so it's zero or nothing and if you're gonna not use the robot you're gonna have to do it with smaller less efficient tools and you're not going to, like, it's going to be a lot of work. Like, you're going to need almost as much labor, almost as much capital and to get, you know, a smaller amount of, of output. Okay? So this will become, I hope, clearer as we go through the course and talk more about uh, once we get closer to the real world and sort of, like, costs and uh, the cost of production and we sort of start to talk more about, like, real concrete economies. But from a mathematical perspective, these are kind of the three things you need to know. Constant, increasing, decreasing. If you double the outputs, if you double the inputs, is the output more than doubled, doubled, or less than doubled?